And now we're going to move on to the final agenda point of today, a winning course. So we're going to start by watching something before we get into that. What is the value of gold? No matter what team or athlete leads the way, we proudly sing the words of our national anthem. <clears throat> no matter what sport it is, ice hockey, sailing, speed skating or discus, we support, we cheer and we celebrate our victories together. Sometimes we take to the streets to enjoy those special moments together with thousands of people. Those shared experiences help us remember that we all belong to the same team. Something we seem to forget now and then. That's why we must also remember the lesser known athletes who push themselves every day to be the best that they can be in the hope of one day reaching the highest level. Giving us as a country the success that we love to celebrate. Many of these athletes are struggling to make ends meet, let alone to find the athletic support that they need. We want to change this. We want to create a platform that provides more athletes with a real opportunity and a more sustainable road to the top of their sport. Support us in creating more resources for Sweden's best teams and athletes. Support us in our ambition to compete for more World Championship, Olympic and Paralympic medals. Support us as we create new heroes new role models and unforgettable memories as we strengthen Sweden's reputation abroad and create a lasting impact in our society. That is the true value of gold. When Sweden wins, we all win. So... Oh, here is uh, Ebba, good. So when Sweden wins, we all win. I, I love that, I have to say. I think it goes straight into our soft power leadership as well that we talked about before. And we're going to meet two role models now who really exemplify exactly this. So warm welcome to, to Anton and Ebba. Ebba Oche, uh, who we have on screen. You look great on screen, Ebba, so uh, you can <laughs> relax. Thank you. Uh, Paralympic skier, 21 years old. Ebba was born with a rare syndrome on her leg that causes almost everything in the leg to function less. Two Paralympic gold and one bronze, two gold at the World Championship. And Ebba is also working on becoming a motivational speaker and role model for people with disabilities. Welcome, Ebba. And then we have Anton Dahlberg here with me, Olympic sailor, 37 years old, also fathers to two children, 10 months and almost three years old. That all, it's also a medal, actually, right there, Anton. Olympic silver medalist and world champion in 2021. Have competed at four Olympic Games, Beijing, London, Rio, and Tokyo. And is now challenging for participating at a fifth in 2024 in Paris, right? And also works as a project manager for the Swedish Olympic Committee. So warm welcome to both of you. It's really wonderful <laughs> to have you here. So you both have impressive rec track records in your two different choices, uh, careers in sports. And you shared with me that you started already between five and seven years old. So this has been a long journey and I'm sure many mountains to, to climb. I was just, just to start, could you share with us what have those journeys looked like and maybe some of the challenges that you had to overcome and some of them maybe again and again. Should we start with you, Ebba, <clears throat> being, uh, being on screen? Uh, yeah, okay. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, for me, uh, my journey as an, as an athlete and a skier have like two different sides, I could say. Uh, I've always had a strong support from my parents and coaches of federation and everything. But like, was there ever something they, they helped me with it? But on the other side of the coin, there was a lot of struggles with my disability, of course. Uh, in and out of hospitals, operations, and as I grew older, the pain increased, and uh, I had a lot of savior and all that was having people around me who believed in me, and they could also like see through my disability and around it, and that helped me so much. 
Thank you, Abba. Before maybe we go further on that, Anton, for you, what your journey has been going on for quite a few years as well, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you didn't you give up. <laughs> I think everyone in here um, are really good at what one part of that journey has been all about, becoming really, really good in something you want to be good in mm. and um, exploration. Uh, and one part of my journey has been doing a lot of training, good training, traveling around in Europe, mm. sending containers across the world. And then one part of this journey has been a lot of passion. Uh, you really need to love this. Love what you do. Yeah. And what, what are some of the challenges that you, you thought were the toughest? I think we have touched upon the, uh, some of those uh, topics today. Uh, one very big challenge, uh, I say like two-person boat. We spoke about communication today. Mm. We spoke yeah. about soft leadership. Uh, to get two person uh, on board a boat to look at the same card when you train. Uh, that has been, uh, I'm amazed how um, you can think differently. Uh, <laughs> still, you, yeah, this is for me truly uh, amazing. Another part, which I think a lot of people in here are very good at, but which I have struggled a bit with sometimes, is to get the whole life management uh, under control while you still safeguard world-class training. Hmm. How you manage to have the different hats on and get it all up to one unit. To, to one life. Yeah, and, 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 th and that in the context of sometimes not having all the resources you want. Hmm. And that's also been a challenge in hmm. it, uh, to get... Um, Finance. Hmm. And, and then I would say something <clears throat> which is so key in sport to really become the best when you want to be the best. Uh, like in, in my world, uh, the Olympics is the key event. Yeah. And to manage to, to uh, do it when you want to do it. So it's a self journey hmm. to know how to self coach yourself. Hmm. We call that self-leadership in the corporate world. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's super central. So, what's so you mentioned passion, and and maybe we'll uh, we'll start with you Abba, on this one. But, but I'm curious about your motivation and internal drivers, because passion, of course, I think it has to be there for all of us doing doing uh, challenging things. But, but um, what 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 are your internal drivers? What what motivates you to refuel when it's really the toughest of times, <clears throat> when it's another surgery or it's another mountain to climb? What what makes you not give up and just sustain that? lust and will to to do what you're doing for me yes <laughs> to start yes. with you Eva. well this is something i'm still struggling with i'm only 21 so but there are many training days where i'm like why am i doing this it's hurting so bad in my leg and and, and, and i'm angry i'm very angry i can't ski faster and it's because of my leg and that's that's really hard, but, but when that happens, I have to remind myself that I'm, my competitors have the same issues with their disabilities. And that motivates me a lot because growing up, I didn't have that. I was skiing uh, against girls who didn't have disabilities, mm -hmm. and now I do, and that's comforting. And well, I'm only 21, so. I have accepted my disability now, but I haven't really accepted it in my skiing yet, but it's still, yeah, I have time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good, that's a, that's a powerful one to remind yourself that others have similar challenges, right? I think it goes in, in all circumstances in life. Uh, what about you, uh, Anton, what would you say? I, I, I say, <clears throat> so you mentioned before, I've done four Olympics. I've been in the game for a very long time and every campaign hasn't been the same. I, I would say that um, relations uh, has been super key. Uh, and by that, um, it's everything from mentors to uh, people who have financed mm. uh, you to, um, to people who can just discuss. And, and then I would say the context. Uh, I think context is, cannot be emphasized enough how important. What do you mean with context? And context, by context, I mean to be at the right place 
And this you can decide beforehand. Usually we go, we have one year uh, ideas and then we divide it down to three months. And uh, when you can sit down and be really rational and say, you, you know that you probably will be tired here. Hmm. And when you are tired, maybe you, you lack motivation. So in which context should you be then? Okay. And, uh, and the same as we, in terms of training, uh, for us, it's very key with having strong benchmark. So like to create the right environment to train in, mm. that I mean with, uh, with context. And then, I mean, I've been lucky in the sense, I mean, joy, <laughs> pure like love of what you do, like it has helped uh, also. Um, reminder of that mm. and like the perspective sometimes actually you do this because you really like it reminding but yourself that you love doing yeah it. and then for us what is very key is sometimes you on and off you need to be very good i, I sometimes say I'll be a world-class resting as well because you sometimes uh, for example after olympic games when you have given your all i need a break like i need to refuel i need mm. to build up and i'm in that sense, I mean, for you, you, you probably have your games there continuous, and of course you are, but for us, it, it, we sometimes can, okay, it's three years now, we put time yeah, frame, and yeah. then you can reevaluate, and this helps as well, that perspective. Have you been close to giving up at, or quitting, or just feeling like, okay, I've done my, all these medals, I've done all, have you been close to that? Yeah, yes, of course. There has been moments, um, uh, the sport has given the best in life, but also the worst. Mm. And uh, I, I, I believe strongly in relationships. And also, I mean, we are two on board, a boat. And uh, when that doesn't work and when you don't get the results you want, mm. I mean, relationships, you test when it's not going the way you want things mm. to go. And uh, yeah, there has been moments. But then I, I believe so much in the, in the power of relationships mm. and having the right ones around you. And we talked about that. Let's let's talk a bit more about that because we talked about that when we talked before and with you as well, Abba, in terms of you mentioned mentors, trainers, uh, teammates, uh, sponsors, people who believe in you, uh, who are really important and that you wouldn't have made it without these relationships. Um, so what about you, Abba? What have all these people meant for you and have they had a similar impact that it actually was the key to not not giving up when it was the toughest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's everything. People, the people around me are everything. Like without my parents, my team, the the federation, and my sponsors, I'm nothing. So, mm -hmm. especially as a para athlete, because nothing comes easy for us. It's mm -hmm. everything from our own bodies to funding. So, I am nothing without the people around me. It's yeah. It's like it's an individual sport, but it's not. <laughs> mm. But I think yeah. both the points you're talking about actually taking a break and refuel and relationships is something which is completely transferable to into the corporate world or or uh, organizational world. And uh, it's just interesting. And I think we talked here about trust, for example. And I think doing more of people relationships and creating trust and being better teammates, whether it's in a boat or with a central bank, I think it's it's extremely relevant in, in, in what we're going through. And I can just say from, from my, I, I have been very lucky in my campaign. Uh, actually, one honor, honor member of this Chamber of Commerce, he now happens to be um, president of the Confederation of Enterprises in Sweden. He saw me and he believed a lot in me. And um, he like kind of created a, a setup that made it possible for me to pursue uh, what I have pursued. And... Um, and I can sometimes be a little bit uh, scared when I look uh, at younger people coming up in the Swedish system uh, where I see um, there is so much potential, there is so much people who have a dream and which I think is um, it's so good for society, but there is not enough support. Mm. And, I, and I have been lucky because of some unique relationships and which I've nurtured and we have found each other and we have managed to create something. But in Sweden, unfortunately, we lack um, a more like national uh, coordinated mm. system. Mm. Uh, just to give you an example, if you compare 
Sweden to UK. So the amount of money the UK sailing team have is, um, is the same as the whole Swedish team in Olympic sport and para sports. So we, 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 are, we are working on very small budgets, but on the other hand, that's um, when you have limitations, you find ways, especially if you have the heart at the right place, I think. So even more resilience and yes. creativity, yeah. perhaps. <laughs> I uh, maybe a final question. I think many of the audience listen to this and as impressed as I am. And and did you have to make sacrifices, or can you actually have it all? Can you have your personal lives and your sports life and your work life? Did you have to make sacrifices, Eva? Yeah, I did. Growing up, it was just me and my sister. We went to school Monday, Friday, but every weekend we were somewhere, and our parents. Uh, drove us everywhere. There was no no friends and nothing, but it paid off. And yeah, but it's also I was, you could say almost I was born with less. And by that I mean like I was less than a normal person. So it's always been an uphill for me uh, with struggles and sacrifices because of my my leg. But I was also born with a great family and I've worked really hard to get the sponsors who believe in me. So, yeah. Thank you. And Anton? Mm. I, I don't see it that way, that there is uh, sacrifices. There have been some hard lessons learned uh, and there have been very hard decisions sometimes. Uh, and at periods, I thought I did sacrifices. Uh, I, I don't believe you can have everything but you can have exactly what you not want, but not everything. But not everything. No, you need to be you very to good know at... what that is. Yeah, and you need to be good at prioritizing, and you need to be good at knowing what you want. Because mm. I... Yeah, as I said before, I, you need to be good at uh, asking for help in our yeah. world, yeah. but you need to know exactly which help you want to have. What it is you need and, yeah. and want at a time. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Eva and Anton, for sharing and sharing so openly with us. Uh, it, I think this is a great ending of today. It fills us with hope and motivation and, and soft power leadership. I know you have a room full of supporters, both in the slopes and on, at sea, and also in your personal lives going forward. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you, Eva.